I think that's interesting um, to sort of uh, research that. And also here in Kuala Lumpur, where the, where, where the public green is more related to the scaffoldings than the actual parks in the city. <laughs> so it's, it's sort of this transition. And at the same time, we should not you know, uh, only see that as a bad thing, but actually technology has always been a part of our culture, eh, of our language, of our, our second skin, so to speak. And we use it in movies uh, to express our imagination and our fantasy. And I see as the role of, of the designer or of the artist to sort of, you know, make connections between the world. That we do not state that we do not end up in a state of uh, schizophrenia eh, where the world are divided, but that actually uh, the virtual and the real world sort of merge together. So, okay, I'm Dan. I'm a designer, architect, artist uh, slash inventor. People always ask me like. Uh, what are you, a designer or an artist? And that's why I like this uh, tag a lot that they made uh, two weeks ago in design. They just put everything on it. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's sort of a blur. Um, and one of the few, one of the first projects we did, uh, which was about merging these two worlds, was about um, was June, here placed in the pedestrian tunnel in uh, in Rotterdam, reacting to the, the shouting of the people. So sort of thinking, how can we use technology to create poetry? And how can we use technology to make environments which make, yeah, which become more human again, maybe. That's the best way to say it. And connecting people. So it rather has a social agenda than a, than a technological one. And I think that's also super exciting for, for young uh, girls and guys uh, like you. Uh, this technological world, will this be George Orwell, uh, Big Brother watching us uh, control? Or is it about Leonardo da Vinci, uh, you know, liberating? We can fly, we can cure diseases. Eh? These are the sort of the two um, uh, world potential futures we talk about. And I think it's the role of the artist to sort of, yeah, make proposals towards that, or, or you know, connect it with some kind of ideology. Oh yeah, wedding couples going there, uh, sort of. Uh, <laughs> starting to occupy it uh, on a daily basis. So, so it sort of generates different types of social behaviors, which sometimes are beautiful and sometimes are uh, uh, kitsch. Um, uh, this is, uh, one year later, we got the call in a way we were always sort of waiting for, to make a permanent version. Um, and this is, you can go there right now in Rotterdam, 60 meter June, uh, uh, for you to visit after, um, uh, when it gets dark. And this is filmed from above, from one of the apartments. So when you walk by, it lights up. There are little cricket sounds in it. And it's besi besides the river Maas. So. And I, I like this. So sometimes it, it, it's a mirror, and sometimes it ignores you a bit. And <laughs> it's a play of co-control. Eh? Sometimes it's a mirror, and sometimes it provokes you to do something different. So we program these ghosts of light, eh? which when you run, And I will, I will spare you the, the beauty and the bullshit in order to make this kind of project happen within public space, such as vandalism, waterproof, and things like that. Um, but it, it, it's out there since two years and working and still uh, working. Sort of merging uh, landscape and technology into one. And um, <coughs> obsessed with, the, with sustainability, making it in such a way that it would only use very, very little uh, power. And this is one of our, what I always sort of scream at, at new people <laughs> in the, in, uh, when they start working for me in the studio. Yeah. When you talk about um, uh, the digitalized world we live in, is that we finally have the challenge and the option to not copy-paste, but to copy-morph, to do something, to learn from it, yeah. and then do it again, but then in a different way. Like the VJ is sort of uh, editing a new world. Um, that's also something we do in the artworks uh, within the same piece. Eh? We make different versions, so to speak, but also in the, in the different projects. Um, so we copy morphed June to this exhibition in Tate Modern, uh, London, eh, where they talked more about the social technologies. Uh, this is in Hong Kong, children sort of mimicking uh, the sounds. And this was the, the proposal for Stripe, as you see it here, where we said, okay, June has been traveling so much already, um, why not sort of uh, uh, put it in a container yeah. and then sort of it travels anyhow like this and we just place it um, in its uh, original habitat, so to speak. Have 30 minutes of installation time in uh, <laughs> the Dutch pragmatism. Uh,
pops up again. But I like it. It's sort of the yeah, the robust shelter uh, of, of the container, and then the, the more the the, 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 the the subtle sensual landscape inside. Second projects. Uh, I'm going a bit fast, so you can you can uh, we can have some uh, questions uh, afterwards. It's an informal thing. Is intimacy. And this was sort of a weird project because sometimes you get uh, commissions yeah, of a curator or, or a collector, but sometimes you, you wake up in the morning and you have an idea. And um, Intimacy was a project exactly like that. that. We said we want to talk about sensuality, we want to talk about second skins, and we want to explore new areas which we are not familiar with, such as fashion. And we teamed up with actually a couple of young fashion designers who are also here today. Um, and the people from the V2 uh, lab, uh, which we made first intimacy dresses, a series of dresses which become more or less transparent according to how intimate you are with it. Um, right now we're showing uh, the first uh, two new ones, which are more wearable. So this one here, it's connected to the heartbeat of the model. So this is the black, going from black to transparent. It's made out of sort of like an electronic paper, so to speak. And all the copper wires and cables are sort of merged within the, within the design. And it really is about um, um, sort of this, this idea of an active skin which is connected to your emotions. This is the white and this is the black. And also here it's self-commissioned and I think this is super important for artists and designers like, 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 like us. Um, uh, the client is um, mostly, uh, well, 85% well, of the time he or she is without imagination so she just wants June in color. Uh, which is completely <laughs> boring, which is a copy paste not a copy morph. Uh, so it's super important that you start to do your own research. and we. This is a typically a project which costs a lot of time, money and energy, but sort of generated a lot of uh, new interest from, interest from fields we were not uh, familiar with. So suddenly I'm invited for fashion juries eh, and surrounded by, by fashion people who want to work with me and talking about active skins. And, and I think that it's, it's super interesting to sort of explore new areas. Um, but what I want to show today, uh, and I did this especially for you, is sort of Intimacy got really published a lot, so we had the Wired magazine publishing and Time magazine and Playboy magazine, eh? all professional <laughs> literature, <laughs> publishing it. A lot of research. Yeah, yeah, we were joking with the Playboy people, like, oh yeah, we hear your interviews are really good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but yeah, it's, it's, it's a funny company. So, uh, art starts to infiltrate, yes? It's without the comfort zone of the white cube, such as Stripe Festival, with all due respect. But it starts to update people's perception. And what I did is uh, one person in the studio spent half of a day looking for all um, the comments of people on intimacy because it went viral the moment we put it online eh, and then it's downloaded a zillion amount of times. And um, this is how Time, Time Magazine started it 15 days ago. The Lazy Girls dating ad, a dress that flirts for you. So like, don't worry girl, you don't have to do anything, the dress will do it for you. Which was not really why we made it, but still. <laughs> And then people start commenting on it, like, I'm going to make a virus for that. Guess what the virus will do, okay. <laughs> and this lady, here, I'm sure I really want everyone else in the room to know how I felt about Hans Petraver. I also want everyone else to see through my clothes and I want to pay lots of money for a stiff, uncomfortable dress that allows me to expose myself in these ways. Still think the science is cool, but geez, humans have their own built-in signals to show how they feel such as blushing and subtle and not so subtle body language. How useless will we become with the art of this when our clothes do be talk about? Besides, sometimes you want the wrong person or attract to someone you don't actually like and you know and you don't want anyone else, etc. 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 And, and sort, of, you sort of start completely sort of, yeah, but yeah, but it's nice, but not, and, and do we want this, etc. etc. And, 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 and uh, which I liked a lot. And, and then the magic question of Jochen Stippers, do women want this? Yeah. Okay. And there was another, I'm not showing you this, but a sort of feminist group, uh, group who said like, no, it, it's abusing uh, women body, and, uh, which is, I think is weird because it's made by, uh, designed by a woman and worn by, well, okay, it's public discussion. And uh, different news, uh, digital kickaboo. And, and this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, this was yesterday. Good, uh, shit, I'm fat. 
that's what it says like okay um, more uh, more people who say oh this is something new the next thing in fashion and then it sort of suddenly start to pop up I guess it's like people actually wanting to buy one okay. I want one who dares to wear it and, and an email we got uh, I think yesterday okay like uh, how much okay. the big question <laughs> so I, I think that's what I liked about these comments is that you show that, that some are uh, offended and some are attracted and, and it's super interesting to sort of see how, how a project which you start, start to sort of, yeah, trigger the imagination of people. So to conclude, um, the two projects, they are here, so you can go there and, 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 and have your own little interactions uh, with it. Um, on one hand, this, this might sign, uh, sound sci-fi, but I, I don't think it, it's about that. It's actually a sort of um, a process which is already going on. Like here, the toilet seats in Tokyo, which has 35 different programs to wash uh, the, the, the you-know-what part of your body. Technology is jumping out of the computer screen and becoming a part of our environment. Eh? Sometimes very functional, but here sometimes you know, over-functional. Uh, like the, the Japanese eh, have this obsession with uh, hygiene. Uh, but also elderly people, and it's being sold in Europe for elderly people who are somehow handicapped or you know, have probably moving. So technology is becoming um, uh, yeah, this extension in a way. And the best example, this is my, one of my favorites. In 1900 the escalator was invented eh, as a gadget. In the beginning people would pay for it to go up and down, literally, in New York in 1900. And now it's a part of our environment. Our world became automated, our world became animated. That doesn't mean the analog world disappeared. No, it's just different. It's, it's, it's reacting to what we do. And of course, this is a very functional object, but it shows how what we, how our world looks like, changed within hundred years, yeah? which is more or less nothing uh, if you look at uh, how long we exist. And I think one thing is to think about new technologies and what we can do with it as tools, yeah? as young designers and architects. But secondly, is so what? You know, what's the story? What do we want to generate with it? And what's the ideology behind it? And, and um, in my opinion, this should be about customization and personalized world, and to make environments which are more human again, and to use technology for that. Um, uh, but that's something, yeah, which is to be decided by, 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 by everyone. Okay, if you want to know more, we just published a book, uh, Interactive Landscapes, uh, which you can, uh, with a lot of stories and interviews, it's in English, or if you want, yeah, you can just grab all the photos and the movies you just saw freely uh, from our website. Or, or <laughs> That's what I wanted to talk about. Thank you. And now we have like, I mean, you're a lot, so maybe it's more interesting to have like five or ten minutes some some questions or you know, what you think of the the, 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 the the beauty and the bullshit of, uh, of, of in general. Yeah, please. Yeah. Question. Uh, I would like to know how your studio works actually. How is the process of creation? Yeah. You just have an idea and say, oh, design. No. How it works. Well, preferably I would have uh, a 3D printer plugged in my neurons and then I could, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, but no, 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 I, I, I need them. It's a group of uh, 12 or 13 people now in Rotterdam. Uh, half of them are more designers and the other are more like the whisk kids, uh, the software and the electronic people. So there's a design department and a technology. And some of them have been with me from day one, so three, four years ago when we started. And it's actually a quite a more fuzzy project. So yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be the director, so I come up with the idea. But uh, the way it's being evolved and, and the type of collaborations we, we go on in the process differs a lot. So it's more that you say like, okay, we want to have dinner tonight. And then together you decide if we eat a Guise Lorraine or a pancake. Yes. Well, and that also depends where you go shopping. So that's how it starts. And we have a second studio in Shanghai recently with four people there now where we more explore the, the larger public scale projects uh, in, in China. And what is important is that we do the design and the technology. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh, and we have a, an internship program, so two or three interns are, are walking around as well. And uh, uh, since it's such a small uh, group, they are not just getting coffee for me the whole day, but, but actually you know, being part of the process. And to be honest, I think like 85% of what I'm doing now, I was never educated to do. So you continuously, you know, you, you find people who can explore, like with intimacy, yeah, teaming up with the fashion, uh, like uh, Mark Dijkstra or Anouk Wibrecht helping us with the design. 
because yeah, I'm, I don't know how to design a dress, you know. But uh, the, the, it, it starts with me having an idea, and then you work together on making it better. Is it important to work together with other people? Because I mean, you could decide to spend time on how do I design a dress. But yeah, do you I don't. I, no, I, I don't think that's so so, so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think what I'm doing now more. What my, what my job is, what I like the most, is sort of traveling like crazy to figure out what's the, what's the most interesting context to place these kind of things. Sometimes it's fashion. Recently we did a project for youth therapy, GGZ, in the, the Netherlands. So to sort of, um, um, like, like where do I generate the most interesting stories, so to speak. And that's something uh, that, that, uh, that, 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 that I do. Not. So. But I could never do these projects alone. They're way too complex for that. Would you say you've like evolved from an architect, designer, artist, more to a storyteller? No, well, story generator. Story generator. Yeah, I'm not telling the story. You are. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. People, I'm just giving the. the I'm just giving. How do you say it? The, the foreset. Yeah, the, yeah. the foreplay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just here to say um, we've got like 12 people, and half of them are the designers, other half are the technical guys. Yeah. Uh, but those are pretty big proje projects, and in uh, my uh, experience, uh, the person you need the most is the one is one that channels that creative energy. So I'm talking not only about uh, production manager, I'm yeah. talking about everything that focuses that something gets finished, gets paid, gets, yeah. gets there for a part that's you. But do you have other project project managers? Do you how do you channel all that creative energy? Yeah, um, well, we we don't believe in a lot of back office uh, people. So I mean, I have an assistant who takes care of a lot of the pragmatic stuff. Um, but but mostly the, the designers or the, the the engineers who work there, they 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 are. I'm demanding that they're somehow self sufficient in that way. So uh, because otherwise you have a lot of meetings and communication yeah. and. Um, um, uh, it professionalized. In the beginning, it was like me walking into a studio uh, after sitting in an airplane and saying, "Okay, this is what I have in mind. It should be finished. I'm not sure what it is, but it should be finished in three months." And and, and now you have so many projects that you, well, if you do that, they, they yeah, you get in fight with their girlfriends a lot because they have to work every night late. But, um, so yes, it's a play of a one and structurizing yeah, and professionalizing. But on the other hand, there should always be space for projects like Intimacy, where my financial advisor is sort of like, ah, like, where, like what, what is this, you know? And then I said, no, it's okay. And the balance between futurism and pragmatism and between um, budget and fantasy, that's exactly, I think, the, 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 where, where you can uh, generate some kind of magic as a designer. Yeah. And I have to say, it's more on a personal note, like my whole family is in trade. So we were connected to Dutch Indonesia a long, long time ago. And there always was the idea that I would take over the business. But I found it incredibly boring. And then you <laughs> buy something and then you put a margin on it and sell it again. But there's no value, there's no added value. So I always said like, no, thank you. And then they were like, oh, he'll come back when he's broke. <laughs> Which I didn't. And, 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 and so, so, yeah, you have to, but then again, if you don't have that quality, there, there are a lot of people who can help you with that. It's just important to consider them as equal as, 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 as anyone else. But it, yeah, you're right. It's a it's a creative struggle. I have another question. You said that you travel quite a lot. And uh, which was the last the last thing you saw that you thought well that's cool? In terms of oh, uh, I don't know. I'm thinking of what which was the last one. Can I come back to that later? Yeah, yeah. yeah let me sort of uh, put <laughs> it here. And we have then, another yeah. five minutes probably. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come back to that later. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so you have like this project like uh, June or, or Intimacy, but um, is that like the core business of, of the, of the yeah. studio? Or yeah. do you also do no. like other sort of kind of. No, there's no hit, no, there's no hidden agenda. There are no rich parents. Uh, this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, that, uh, so those actually at the moment, sort of those two projects are. No, we have like eight of them. 
Yeah, but eight different versions of the no, same No, eight, eight different projects. Eight different artworks traveling. We're working a lot on public space commissions. Yeah, you, I cannot show you them. <coughs> oh yeah, I can show you this one. This is secret. Secret. <laughs> uh, released today, Crystal. It's actually a project which we're going to place here at Strive S. 500 square meters of these crystals, which are charged uh, wirelessly via the ground, some kind of invention we made, uh, which light up when you walk over it. And this is a permanent light installation. Um, this is like a project we spent two or three years on it and, and released uh, today. Uh, so, so we do partly exhibition, but also partly uh, uh, permanent art. Like with the uh, yeah. architect. I think everybody just wants to know how to make money with art. Eh? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> to make more. Now, and it's, it's be good and rob old ladies on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can sell recommend. Sell crystals. You can, uh, yeah, yeah. I say we sell Dan, crystals. Yeah. Can you take that one out already? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is charged by a LED. In the end, okay. it will be uh, a different yeah, wire. Okay, because I'm very curious about that effect. How, how it really. Close. Yeah. yeah, well, come come back to Stripe next year. Yeah. So, yeah. Is that with Philips as well? Philips is a, is a, is a, a, a preferred supplier. Yeah. But the client is Eindhoven, yeah. city of Eindhoven. Yeah. yeah. And uh, some other questions from other people. I, I was quite curious how did you develop that fabric yourself of the Intus project? It was a, a material which existed but only in glass. So we traced the manufacturer because the glass manufacturers would not say where we got it from. And um, we traced the manufacturer and then we talked to the director um, and he was not interested. He was like, okay, come back when you want one kilometer and uh, goodbye. <laughs> and we made the first two dresses uh, and then uh, with V2 uh, and the people and then Design and Design Moon picked it up and then his wife the wife of the director, of the CAO, <laughs> saw it online and she made him call me on my mobile and say, yeah, my, my wife has to, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool, uh, we have a project. So, and that's when we started to work uh, on it and now we're working on uh, going from blue to transparent and stuff like that. So yes, the, the relationship with the manufacturer, yeah, how to make it flexible, UV proof, that it works and remains working, is super important. And, that, 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 that these are state of negotiations which continuously in, in uh, but I think that's also oh. <laughs> that's uh, that's part of the creative process yeah. is this okay. thank you I'm, very I'm, much I'm, I, uh, next time I'm going to answer your question yeah I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm numb okay. thanks guys yeah. sadly hey this is the end of the last round of How Will You Do 2000.